With their strict rules on social interaction, modest dress, and general affinity for all things pure and respectable, it would not be out of place to say that the Victorians are known as some of the biggest prudes in history. However, the Victorians weren't as bad as most people assume. They just like to keep personal matters such as romance in the home. But like any group of people, there were those who were rule breakers, and the Victorians were no exception to this. With changing attitudes, many young people, especially teenagers, began to reject the uptight rules of courtship in favor of a new method for picking up hot singles in their area. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Historidame, and today we're discussing the art of the flirtation card. In the 19th century, there were many types of social cards used by the members of the upper classes in order to help people navigate the complex rules of interacting in society. An act as simple as introducing yourself to someone was a social minefield, so various social cards were created that could help ease the tension. Social cards served many different functions, including expressing condolences, celebrational cards, dance cards, calling cards, and of course, the flirtation card. Flirtation cards evolved from the well-documented phenomenon of British calling cards. In the 1850s, advances in printing technology made cards affordable for the upper and emerging middle classes. A proper gentleman would use calling cards in order to formally introduce himself to a new acquaintance, or to call upon friends and relatives. A calling card was professionally printed with someone's name, their photograph or portrait, their home address, and other information. They had many functions when it came to social interaction in polite society. These included announcing a future visit, inviting someone to your home, or to be left behind in order to inform someone that you had attempted to visit them while they were out. There was even a language of corner folding on the cards that would inform the recipient when the giver would be available for a visit or when they would be away. But as much as everyday socializing was a veritable gauntlet, courting was an even more difficult game. In order for two members of the opposite sex to speak to one another, they first had to be introduced by a mutual acquaintance. After that, courting was primarily done within the home, under the watchful eye of a young lady's parents. Outside the home, couples that were courting were barred from any sort of physical contact or public displays of affection, with the one exception being that a man could offer a lady his hand if the road was uneven. It does make one wonder how many bumpy roads were taken deliberately. As you can imagine, with such strict rules, there was a lot of pressure involved for young people, who were just trying to find a romantic partner. As a result, more daring individuals eventually developed the flirtation card as a more casual way to begin a courtship. Similar to a calling card, a flirtation or escort card was a small paper rectangle that was handed from one person to another. Unlike a calling card, however, instead of displaying one's information, it would also include short flirtatious messages. Much like the modern-day pickup line, flirtation cards were used to break the ice, often employing humor or witty remarks in order to do so. Some examples include, Fair lady, may I become the proud bird who shall accompany you to your leafy bower? Or must I suffer the misery of seeing you borne away and triumph by the individual whose chronotintype appears at the right? Dear Miss, I will risk everything depicted here if you will permit me to see you as far as the gate. May I see you home, or will I have to sit on the fence and watch you meander by? Come and see our new lamp. You can turn it down so low that there is scarcely any light at all. P.S. Our sofa just holds two. See what I mean? Absolutely scandalous. These cards allowed young people to break free of the more strict social regulations of the time, and express interest in a potential mate in a way that was both subtle and respectable. The 2000 Encyclopedia of Ephemera describes flirtation cards as something that, quote, brought levity to what otherwise might have seemed a more formal proposal. A common means of introduction, it was never taken too seriously. Indeed, the subtle nature of these cards allowed women to remain respectable in public, but also let them reject any unwanted advances without drawing too much attention. A typical interaction went as follows. A man and a woman would pass each other in the street. The man would make eye contact in order to express interest. If the woman was also interested, she could dangle her handkerchief towards him. 
Afterwards, one of them, usually the man but sometimes the woman, would hand the other their card, and a courtship could begin from there. As times progressed, things did eventually become more lenient when it came to social interaction between members of the opposite sex, and as a result, flirtation cards were no longer needed in order to provide that subtle invitation. With the rise of the telephone, young people soon began to exchange phone numbers and cheesy pickup lines instead, and the flirtation card largely fell out of fashion. Hey everyone, thanks for watching! If you liked the video, please consider leaving a like or a comment down below. Which flirtation card did you find the best? Should we bring them back at all? If you want to see more content like this, you can also subscribe to my channel, and keep up to date on all the fun videos of the future. But for now, I bid you farewell.